Hello guys, Reza here and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. In this video, we will dive into what user parameters are and how they can enhance your visual effects workflow. Let's get started. User parameters are custom data inputs that allow you to dynamically control various aspects of your visual effects system, providing greater flexibility and power. Even Epic Games relies heavily on user parameters in their Niagara demos showcased at conferences and tech demos. In this tutorial, we'll put this into practice using the Volume Smoke tutorial I did a while ago and we will see how user parameters can expedite changes and enhance your VFX work efficiently. Let's explore the main objective of this tutorial. What I would like to do is to go into my Niagara system, identify and expose some of these key properties that I find myself using every single time and bring it into my outliner. Right now, if I select my Niagara system and look at my user parameters rollout, it's inactive. So this means that every single time I want to make any changes to this particle, I need to go and open Niagara system, go into my Niagara emitter, find the attribute that I want to change, make that change, compile, save, go back to see the result. Well, with user parameters, Everything is at my disposal right in front of me in the main user interface. And that is the power of user parameters. We have different scenarios that we can play around with. So let's explore how actually create user parameters, how to apply user parameters and how they can serve us to have a much faster optimized workflow. Where to find user parameters? Well, if I look here, user parameters are here in the main system. And if I look at the left-hand side, at the bottom of the left-hand side, we have the user parameter tab in front of us. Also, any attribute or properties that you target, there is a down arrow which I can click on so we can add more modules. If I type in user, the only parameter that comes up is actually user parameter that we can add to any of these properties. So let's try different scenarios. Let's say I would like to go into my scale color and I would like to create a user parameter for my scale curve, which controls the opacity of my Niagara effects. Well, that's very simple. You go into user parameter, you click on this plus to add a user parameter and you need to think about what is the nature of this value. Is that an integer? Is that a float? Uh, so are we dealing with decimals or is it just round numbers, integer, float? Or are we going to work with vector values? If I go into make new and look at the common, you can see we have Boolean, which is yes and no. We have float, we have integer, linear color, matrix, which is going to expose certain values and link that to another property of another object. So there are many nodes that are accessible via these rollouts, which we can use. But let's say we want to target scale curve and I'm already using a float value here. So I can just comfortably type in float and bring in a float value. We need to name it properly. So in that case, we call this opaqueness or simply opacity. This is the opacity of our volumetric fog. And I would like to replicate the exact same number as this serves as our default number. Now we have this user parameter. If I go in here, we have this user parameter now exposed in our main outliner, but it really doesn't do anything. 
right? So what I would like to do is to connect this to any attribute or parameter that I want. In this case, scale curve. Now, this is the simplest form of applying user parameters. You select the user parameter that you want, left click hold, drag and drop onto this scale curve. Now the scale curve value will be controlled by a float value that we added as our user parameter. Now, if I go back and let's say I want to increase the opaqueness of my volumetric smoke, I can just change it, put down two and look at that. Immediately, I'm getting a much denser result. So this is the simplest form of applying user parameters and you can do it for pretty much all of your key properties within your Niagara system. Instead of going back and forth between your main system and your level, just expose that property and parameter in your main user interface and control it this way. The cool thing about this is this is now accessible in the level sequencer and also via the blueprints. With blueprints, you can get a reference to your Niagara system component, then use the set float parameter, set vector parameter, etc. nodes to modify the parameter. And as for level sequencer, it can be identified as a track that you can add simply into your level sequencer. Is there any other scenarios that we can play around with? Well, sometimes you can select a group of parameters and turn all of them into user parameter in one go. For example, if I go into initialize particle and point, I have color, but there is a rollout here which expose red, green, blue, and alpha. What if I want to have all of this exactly as a user parameter? You can easily select on this down arrow, type in user, and it reads from new user parameter. The whole block will turn into a user parameter. You don't need to rename it because we're reading from this parameter right here. And it exposes exactly what we have and bring it into the main user interface. That's another way of using user parameters without creating a custom one. We just turn what we have into a user parameter. That's going to be really beneficial in case if you have so many values and you would like to bring a block of parameters as your user parameter. Now, if I go back, you can see we have access to the exact same rollout. I can go in there and somehow change the red color and you can see we're getting a more of a warmish color. I can reset and this time, let's say I want to bring up blue and all of a sudden we're getting a blue type of smoke. I can easily reset, bring everything back to default. So that's another way of using the user parameter. There is a third way, which is a combination of uh, using user parameter and another float value. And that's where you have min and max. I remember when I did this tutorial a while back, I had to go into my initialized particle sprite and I needed to play around with these two values. You can turn each one of them into user parameters, but you will end up having two user parameters and it might not be the best case scenario if you have too many of these user parameters. So what if we want to aim to have one user parameter for this min and max? It is also possible. So this is the size. Let's go and create a, another float and call that size. And let's bring that size into max like so. And let's create a situation where the system automatically adjusts the minimum based on our maximum. So if you remember, our maximum was 1500. So we, I'm going to put that default value in there. And for the minimum, what I would like to do is to create a multiply float. 
So this multiply float will get calculated for the minimum value. And now I can put this size in the B and put something like 0.8, we had 800, 0.8 in the A. And now I'll end up having one value to control both min and max. That's another possible scenario that you may run into. Multiply float is going to be extremely helpful in cases like this. Now, if I go back, I have the size. I'm going to bring this one back, let's say to something like one. So we're still getting a little bit of opaque result. And now this 1500, I can bring it down to, let's say, 1000. And you should immediately see the separation of the particles happening. So this controls both min and max. Perhaps I need to again increase the opaqueness so you guys get to see what's going on. You can see the smoke is now breaking up, which is in itself a very cool effect. But you don't need to go back and change those values every single time, save and come back. Everything is right in front of you in the main user interface. That was a short tutorial, but I hope you found it useful and you use user parameters more often in your own projects. Have a great rest of your day. As usual, thanks for your support. See you guys later.